This FIFA Confederations Cup has definitely been a doozy. So far we've had 34 total goals, an average of 2.83 goals per game. <clears throat> and for the upcoming semi-finals, we have all three of the top goal scorers so far, all of which have netted two goals each. Cristiano Ronaldo, Lars Stindl, and Timo Werner. We also have the most assists given by individuals, which is also two. We've got Hector Herrera and Joshua Kimmich still in this. It is looking like great semifinals. There's not much really to pick apart between all the semifinal contestants, except for Mexico, who is the only team who has ever won this competition out of these four clubs. Chile and Portugal are actually making their first appearances in this tournament, while Germany has made two previous appearances. I thought we'd dig into the first match first. Well, it's actually the second match, but the match that's probably drawing the most attention. Mexico versus Germany. This is looking like a doozy and a half, mostly because... Germany doesn't really look like they've brought their strongest squad to this competition with an average age of 23. The youngest out of all four clubs, teams. Germany had to play Australia, Chile, and Cameroon on the way here. Meanwhile, Mexico played Portugal, New Zealand, and Russia. Not much really to pick apart from these groups. I guess you could say Germany had the luckier draw because Australia and Cameroon overall are a bit easier while Portugal and Russia were both really hard teams that were really informed Russia had one of the best keepers right now okay now let's do a breakdown of the formations Germany has only been lining up in either a 3-4-3 or a 4-5-1 Germany loves to have possession although during this tournament, they've only managed to average 57% possession. If you're thinking, well, Jason, that doesn't sound that bad. That's, that's a decent amount of possession. What are you talking about? Why are you talking about my team like that? Well, it does indeed sound like a little bit of possession when you consider that Mexico has the highest average possession of this tournament with a 63% average. Mexico has only been lining up in either a 4-3-3 or a 3-4-3. However, I think in light of this semi-finale, Mexico is going to want to line up in a 4-3-3 because they've gotten similar results offensively with much less risk at the back. If we do an even, even further breakdown, these are my top three players that I think are definitely going to be in the starting lineups for both teams. Three players each. Three players that are definitely going to have to be there because they've made they've played the most minutes. They're they're just the overall prime candidates for these club these teams to pick. For Germany, the most played player we have is Joshua Kimmich. Only 22 years old, this this kid proves exactly what I was saying, that they have brought a rather young squad. That lack of experience might be what takes them out of this. But anyway, Joshua Kimmich has played 270 minutes in this tournament, and he has assisted twice with no goals to his name. However, I think it's really... Not that great of an idea to base a player off of three games. It would be more fair to evaluate their overall season. So for his overall season, he played 2,092 minutes for his club, Bayern Munich. He scored nine goals, assisted twice. So minute cre per creation is sort of, I always see those, how many minutes per goal? Like how long does it usually take for him to score? Minutes per creation is how long does it usually take to him for him to either make a goal or assist a goal Joshua Kimmich every 190 minutes he either gives out a goal or an assist he's a very offensive minded player then they have Julian Draxler who's only 23 years old once again this tournament he's played 260 minutes and he's already scored a goal and assisted once 
his overall season though he played 2721 minutes he made 10 goals and assisted five times this man whipped something out every 181 minutes sebastian rudy coming in at 27 years old is the more creative player out of these three in my opinion he's played 254 minutes in this tournament but he's yet to give an assist or a goal but his overall season he played 2998 minutes gave 10 assists and scored three goals he created something every 230 minutes i feel like joshua kimmich is the most offensive minded character out of the three sebastian rudy is really the most assistive player here and julian draxler is the perfect combination of the two but mexico certainly isn't slacking in their breakdown as well number one i swear every single picture of hector herrera out there is the ugliest thing i've ever seen but i don't care because this man is something else on the pitch he comes in at 27 years old this tournament he has played 225 minutes and he has already assisted twice his overall season for fc porto he played 2110 minutes scored two goals assisted six times he created something every 263 minutes which is not bad at all surprisingly the other two players that mexico has played the most is they're both defenders but when you look at diego reyes you can certainly tell that he has something more than hector moreno for example for his tournament info he has so far played 219 minutes and he has gotten one yellow card but when you compare it to his season info, that yellow card seems to be an outlier because he played 2,979 minutes, scored at one goal, and yet he only got two yellow cards. For defenders, I think the most appropriate thing is how many yellow cards do they, do they get on average per minute, like minutes. Every 1,489 minutes, he gets on average one yellow card. You're probably thinking, oh, that's kind of good but when you compare it to Hector Moreno you can truly notice that this man is something else Hector Moreno is 29 years old for his tournament info he has played 215 minutes he scored once no assist and no yellow cards luckily to his name for his season if info though he has played 3461 minutes scored seven goals assisted once but he has nine yellow cards to his name he was getting a yellow card every 384 minutes. When you compare that to Diego Reyes, you can certainly tell that Diego Reyes is certainly a much more clean defender overall. Honestly, popping back up the, the original matches that they've played, I don't know, there is not much to tear apart these two teams but i think if germany wants to win it they're gonna have to stick to their three in the back formation but they're gonna need to increase their possession because if they don't mexico will literally rip them apart if you don't have the ball you're not scoring you have no chance of scoring only the other team does for mexico to win I think they're going to have to stick to that four in the back. They get good possession there, and they don't risk counterattacks that often. They've both got a great amount of players to their names, but I think it's going to be age versus experience here. If Mexico's players can show that they're experienced enough and that their international experience will overcome, then I think Germany's rather lackluster squad won't be able to handle what Mexico is giving out but if Mexico but if Germany can regain that possession that we have always known them to have I think this match will be very difficult for Mexico because then a three in the back will be necessary because they're gonna have to give it their all but then they can likely be punished a lot worse the second semi-final of this competition we have is Chile versus Portugal. Oh my, this is the match that I am looking at. Like, there is really not much to tear these two teams apart. On one hand, Portugal is the best offensive and they match Chile defensively in this tournament. 
they've literally both only conceded two goals. It's it's looking amazing. As we go into Chile's formations, the thing that is really holding back Chile, they they average 55% possession, which isn't bad at all. They usually line up in a 4-3-3. The only difference is that they've done is Diaz will drop down a little and Vidal will sort of get into that cam position in between the defensive defenders and the midfield. It's really good for him because then defenders find trouble marking him. Either midfielders have to drop down or defenders have to push up in order to block him. And I think for this upcoming match, it would work really well. Because the one thing about Portugal's formation... I don't know if you guys can notice anything similar between all three of the formations that they've used between their matches. But Portugal has not moved away from their 4-4-2, averaging only 52% possession. The least out of all four teams. The problem with the 4-4-2 that I see, that I can see Chile really punishing on, is the 4-4-2 is really vulnerable when your opponent has a center defensive mid or a cam because here you're really just hoping that Cristiano Ronaldo or Nani get that ball and you're hoping that Caresma can either cut inside and then pass it in pass it in, inside or Gomez can cut inside and pass it inside but if you have a center defensive mid he is perfectly lined up to cut out those passes Another thing is the cam fits perfectly between your defense and your midfield. Someone, either Pepe is going to have to move up or Fonte is going to have to move up or Williams is going to have to drop down or Martino is going to have to drop down, but someone's going to have to move to block Vidal if Chile plays with the cam. But for overall breakdowns, Portugal has one of the oddest ones. They have the best player right now in this tournament in terms of his season and yet they have the worst player in in terms of their seasons Rui Patricio has played 270 minutes he has conceded two goals on average he concedes a goal every 136 minutes this tournament but when checking out his season info he played 3420 minutes and he conceded 42 goals. This man was conceding a goal every 81 minutes. He was conceding a goal once every match. Not as, like, if it just went by average, he would not have gotten a single clean sheet. Now you're probably thinking, Oh, Jason, how do we know his team didn't just do really, really bad, so that's why they were already sco always scoring on him. Well, I'm not sure that's quite the case because his team got third place in the season overall. So so then I, I, I had to dig even further. I checked his international info. Internationally, this man has played 5,588 minutes, conceded 42 goals. This man overall, his entire, conce his entire international career has conceded the same amount of goals he has in this past season. For his international team, he on average, he concedes a goal every 133 minutes, which is more like what we're seeing in this tournament. I don't know what it is about this man, but when he puts on the Portugal jersey, he becomes something else. Someone else. On the next hand, we have Pepe right here, 34 years old. Our favorite Baldi, you know him. He has played 270 minutes as well this tournament. He has gotten two yellow cards. On average, he conceded a yellow card every 135 minutes. But when you consider his season, he is second only to Diego Reyes. He's played 1,460 minutes this season, scored two goals, assisted once, and he got a yellow card every 1,460 minutes. Really impressive. Meanwhile, the one with the coming in with the best season overall, Cristiano Ronaldo. Coming in at 32 years old, looking like a 26-year-old. This tournament, he's played 247 minutes. He has scored twice and assisted once. However, during his season, he played 4,126 minutes. 
He scored 42 goals and assisted twice. This man creates something every 76 minutes. I can tell you without a doubt that this man is going to pull something out this semi-final. At least that's what all the stats are pointing to. For the Chile breakdown, we have another one where they have defenders in here more than offensive players. Number one, Mauricio Isla coming in at 29 years old. This man, this tournament, has played 270 minutes and not gotten a single yellow card. The same cannot be said for his season though. He played 2,958 minutes, scored once, assisted seven times, and yet he got 10 yellow cards. This man pulls out a yellow card every 295 minutes. Arturo Vidal coming in at 30 years old, but this man is not stopping. Honestly, my top player for Chile right now. He's played all three games. Not a, not a minute was he subbed off. 270 minutes. He has scored once, assisted once, and gotten one yellow card. This man is overall decent. His season info, though, he played 2,946 minutes for Bayern. He scored nine times and assisted four times. He creates something every 226 minutes. For the Chile versus Portugal man, I say him and Por and Ronaldo are the men to watch. And, of course, the goalie for Portugal. It all depends on if he has his club jersey underneath or if he's just wearing the international jersey and he's going to turn into the second coming real quick. Their third player is Gonzalo Jara, Jara, 31 years old. This tournament, he has played 270 minutes as well. These three players have all played 270 minutes. The only out of all four teams. He's gotten one yellow card. One yellow card every 270 minutes. That's not even bad. One yellow card every three games. His season info, though, he played 1,531 minutes and he got a yellow eight yellow cards and he got a yellow card every 191 minutes going back to comparing these two teams it is going to be rather hard to split these two apart but honestly what I think can make or break these teams is Portugal has a 442 that can easily be exploited by the cam and the center defensive mid but their 442 is a lot more fluid than any other 442s I've seen in a while. If they can really make it fluid and still cover all their bases while still attacking well, I think Portugal has more than enough to beat Chile. Mostly because Chile has yet to find a crucial striker. They don't have anyone who can put it in the back of the net consistently. I don't know if you saw their top three players, but not any of them have... Oh, well... It was one cam, and he doesn't have all that many goals. They don't have a consistent goal score. But all their midfield and forwards can score. It's crazy. I don't know. I think this is one of the hardest games to split apart, but I don't know. This one, I, I just have no opinion. Comment if you have an opinion on who you think will win this clash who you think will win the other clash comment it all like comment subscribe if you like this kind of video it's my first time doing it or dislike leave a hateful comment do whatever you want to do it's up to you